Right, this for me is the most difficult part of the bag. It's when we get a little bit uncomfortable at the longer end of the bag. How do we fit it? How do we make it work for us? And today I'm going to look at the options. And those options are generally uh, a long iron, a hybrid or a fairway wood. But these clubs are often categorized by what handicap you play. And in my opinion, that is completely wrong. These clubs should be based on your swing speed, your club head speed, because essentially that is what's going to be the big difference between each of those in their performance characteristics and how they might work or might not for you as an individual irrelevant of your handicap. So the first thing we've got to do is establish what do these three clubs do? What are their performance characteristics in my hands? And this is something obviously you've got to do in yours. I first got to establish where is the problem area? Where does the problem start? Well, I start to struggle around 180 yards with my irons because I'm not generating enough club head speed uh, to see the differences in stepping up incrementally in irons. So I need to fill that void. Then I've got to ask myself the question, you have to, you, is what am I looking for? When am I going to use these clubs? Well, I'm going to use it on long par threes and I'm going to use it as second shots on par fours. So that tells me that I'm not going to use it off the tee very often. So what I'm looking for in terms of ball flight is something that's high launching because I want it to be able to cover bunkers and hazards that are often found in front of greens. I also want to have a good combination of spin and descent angle because if I do manage to hit a green, I want to make sure it holds the green and has the right kind of stopping power. So that's what I'm looking for from each of these clubs. And with Trackman data, what I'm hoping to do is establish which one of these provides the best solution. Because what you simply do not want is start to put clubs in your bag that are just simply cobweb collectors. They just sit there, they don't fill a void, they don't do a job. And the reason for that is that they simply don't do the job that you intended them for. Okay, so turned over a tad. But the first thing we're going to need to do is establish what each of these clubs do. And if you haven't been custom fit, then it is really, really key. I don't see how anyone can spend money without understanding these elements. Um, second four iron of the day, the first one was better, but it wasn't on camera. But essentially, I will collect a number uh, of shots with this in hand. 15.4 launch suggests it's launching quite low. 188 carry. The 180 to 90, 190 distance is where I'd be looking to, to cover. Peak height, 70 feet, still a bit low. Spin number, 2821, a bit low. And that land angle again is coming in fairly flat. So already I've got concerns about the four iron, but I'll carry on hitting some of these. We'll get around 10 shots with each, and then I'll move on to the hybrid. But already there are concerns. Yes, I'm getting the carry distance I'm looking to achieve, but at what cost? Right, so that's first club hit, the four iron, and very briefly, let's not go into delving too much, but what I found from the first set of numbers we discussed was exactly the same throughout the set. The next thing we've got to look at is the dispersion. So, okay, there's certain things I'm looking for, parameters-wise, and that launch angle, that descent angle, are not ideal, but how consistent was it? Overall, not too bad. Um, we are talking about a club here that's carrying to 190 yards. How accurate am I with either of those? Well, time will tell. But right now, this club was okay, but didn't fit the bill. So, four iron, we've got a certain amount of degrees and loft on that club. I'm gonna switch up into a hybrid, which will have exactly the same loft on it. The question is, what is different about the performance when I move into a hybrid? Today's video was filmed at Chester and North Wales Golf Academy. Right. We got a ball fight? There we go. A bit delayed and a bit right. But immediately we've uh, well, we're going to talk about some very interesting attributes in terms of performance very very soon and you might pick up on them straight away from the first shot hit. But the first thing I want to talk about is the very visible difference is how these two things look at a dress. I want to mention that because it's hugely important because at the end of all this if you ever go for a custom fit and you're purely led by numbers but you don't like what you see in front of you it isn't going to work in the long term because the minute things go wrong you will start to blame that club. 
So a four iron and a four hybrid look very, very different at dress. And you've got to be comfortable and confident that that's the club you want to use. But already I can see huge differences in data. So let's carry on hitting some more balls with the hybrid exactly the same loft hybrid by the way 22 degrees as what the four iron was and see where this goes right let's stop there with the four hybrid i'm not sure how many balls we've got here but we've got a, a picture painted quite clearly quite quickly one thing is dispersion again still leaking out to the right that's all about my swing attributes the poorness of my swing the quality and consistency of it that's why this channel is aptly named the average golfer but it's reality there's no club that is going to cure that apart from your swing but these are the averages that i've got up on screen for you in front of you and these are really interesting and much more in line with what i'm looking to achieve so a 186 carry on average with a 17.2 launch so we're hitting the target area 180 to 190 and we're launching it high we've got good ball speed relative to club head speed so what that means is it's very efficient as a club and the, uh, I'm either finding the sweet spot more often or we're getting faster ball speeds. It's just a little bit hotter off this face, whichever you want to take it from. We've got a big difference in peak height, 95 feet. That's significantly different. We've also got a spin number of 4137, significantly different. And we've got a land angle of 44.6 degrees, significantly different. Now, all of those things are far superior to the performance of the four iron for what it is that I'm looking to achieve. That doesn't mean to say one is better than the other, it just means they do things very, very differently. And that's why it's so important you go through one of these scenarios yourself to find out what your best solution is. But right now, the hybrid, the four hybrid would fill that void. But what happens when we move in to a seven wood? Right, so next up, before we go any further, we're going to move into a seven wood. This seven wood is uh, what's well, originally 21 degrees. We've added one uh, degree of loft. So essentially, in theory, we're all at 22 degrees. But there's a big difference with the seven wood, not just aesthetically. So you've got three clubs to choose from now, an iron, a hybrid or a fairy wood, all very, very different. And again, very much different preferences uh, per individual. But the other thing to mention about the seven wood is we're now moving into a longer shaft. So we're probably two inches longer than that of the hybrid. That's a considerable difference. So we are expecting this to go a little bit further. We'll see what the data tells us, but we're also possibly losing a little bit more control. My dispersion has not been great so far, but we'll see what happens with a seven wood and what kind of performance we achieve. Well, I can tell you that felt solid. That's the first thing. Now, first thing you notice, if uh, we can see the screen, it's just that launch angle and, well, peak height, what it ends up being. So 18 degrees of launch, but because of where this ball is traveling and the spin number, all the combination, we've got a peak height of 110 feet. That is a towering ball flight. And just look at that land angle, 48.2 degrees. That thing is coming down so steep that it is stopping on a sixpence, 190 carry. I'm just reading off the screen in front of me at 127 ball speed. That's the first one hit already telling me how good a seven wood can be, whether or not it's the right club for the job remains to be seen. I'll carry on as with the other, hitting some balls, collect some data, and let's see, is the seven wood the solution? So again, same thing as what we did with the hybrid. They're the average numbers on the screen, 188 carry, um, 17.4 launch. Ball speed to club head ratio, really good. That peak height averaging 96, a spin rate of 3,950 and a land angle of 44.5 degrees. Now, first of all, you would eliminate the four iron from this equation immediately because it doesn't come anywhere near the next two sets of numbers for what I would be looking to achieve. Not everybody, but in this case, this is what we're trying to do. So that 180 to 190 carry, there's an argument that the seven wood could be a tad long, we could add a little bit more loft as the option. And I think that's the other key advantage that hybrids, fairy woods have over long irons in general, is that adjustability. I know some of the driving irons are adjustable, but uh, in a standard iron in a bag, that's something you really have to consider. Because by perhaps adding another degree of loft, we would really get the, um, the seven wood into the window that I wanted it to be. But then you look at that dispersion, which is quite surprising, um, but also something that we spoke about quite a lot. I'm more than comfortable with a 41, 42 inch shaft, which is what the seven wood will have. 
So my dispersion was probably better, in fact, than the hybrid. I think that was just a slight tweak in the swing based on what had happened with the hybrid. Um, and like I said, we're carrying 190 yards. I'm more than happy with, we've got probably four or five balls on the green and we've got one leak right and one leak left. But the point for me is those performance attributes are key. Now, if this experiment was done by somebody with a far faster club head speed than me, they could produce very, very different numbers. The four iron could be that it launches significantly higher, probably will. Peak height and spin will also increase as will a land angle. So that's why I started this video by saying I don't like products categorized by handicap because I know plenty of scratch golfers who swing the club the same speed as me. But that means that a four iron wouldn't work for them. So you've got to be really careful by how you choose clubs, how you select them and make sure, as I always say in every video, custom fit to me is paramount. Unless you want to take a gamble and waste some money you have to go and get custom fit so the three key difference between a four iron a four hybrid and a seven wood are there for you to see it's now for you to digest it see if any of it works for you but most importantly make your own decisions based on your own numbers and see what works in your bag right as ever thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it see you all soon